Now, the NHS in England, let's talk about that again. It's spending nearly a fifth of its maternity budget on clinical negligence insurance. The public spending watchdog, the National Audit Office, says the cost of the cover adds up to just under £700 for every live birth. The chair of the Public Accounts Committee in the Commons, Margaret Hodge, has called the figure absolutely scandalous. The NAO also says the number of midwives is increasing, but there was still a shortfall of 2,300 staff last year. The government insists safety standards are improving, but the shadow health minister, Luciana Berger, says there's a link between staffing levels and the quality of care provided. If we had uh, safe staffing levels, um, arguably, you know, we'd be ensuring that people would be having better care. So the government needs to urgently look at this. Well, Peter Savage is a partner at the Clinical Negligence Specialist Law Firm Medical Accident Group and Sheena Byram is a midwife based in Lancashire. Good afternoon to both of you. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Sheila. Pe Peter, first of all, what kind of clinical negligence cases do you come across in maternity units? Uh, a full range, Sheila. Um, a, a lower value claim might, might be a minor injury to the mother during the delivery. Uh, the more serious claims might be the starvation of oxygen resulting in possibly a cerebral palsy claim. And Sheena, how much does, if not fear, then at least active concern about litigation play a part in, in, your, in a midwife's working day, do you think? Yes, it does. It, it plays a large part. And it's not just a fear of recrimination from a litigation case, but it's actually from the processes that are involved in ensuring that the um, insurance policy, so the clinical negligence, negligence scheme trust, um, policy is, is sort of compliant. So it's just sort of the whole fear agenda is, is there uh, um, quite alive, really. What about the figures, Peter? £700 per live birth, essentially, when you break it down for, for insurance cover. What, does that sound right to you? Or? Well, I, I can't say whether or not it is right, Sheila. If, if that's the figure that's being quoted, that's the figure. But I think it's incorrect to focus on that figure. The focus should be cutting out mistakes. Uh, mistakes are clearly being made as a result of a lack of experienced midwives and obstetricians. And I would echo and sympathise with the comments of the midwife. I mean, I'm... Well, I'm, I'm, hang on. We can't, we can't say with, uh, for, for certain that that's the, those are the only circumstances in which mistakes happen. The very best people can make mistakes. Yes, but... A claim doesn't always arise if a mistake's been made, Sheila. The, the, the burden of proof in a clinical negligence claim is quite high. The claimant needs to show that the medical treatment fell below a standard that a reasonable body of medical opinion would find acceptable. There has to be clear negligence. Sheena? Yes, it does. But uh, what you said before about um, staff that aren't qualified or not skilled up enough, that's not, not necessarily the case. We can have the most skilled health professionals making mistakes just as you can in any other. And we have to be clear about this. Safety is absolutely paramount in anybody's care. But actually, the legal process, as it stands now, isn't improving safety. It's not improving care. It's actually making it worse. It's making the situation worse. It's caused enormous burden on the financial aspects and it's also causing an enormous burden on the staff working in the NHS because break, they're fearful. Break, so, break this down for me if you would, Sheena. I, yeah, I, 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 have, I have some knowledge of this because my sister is a midwife and yes. she's, she's spoken to me about the, the degree of record keeping yes, that has to be done moment to moment. Tripl triplicate to what it was, say, five years ago mm. and it's increasing by the minute. And that's not just the, the, you know, it's not the only thing. It's the, the record keeping is becoming so sort of paramount that the focus of the care goes on the record rather than the woman or the family. And the worry about that is I've had midwives saying to me, and this is absolutely diabolic and I don't agree with it at all, but midwives have said they're so scared of the, rec of the, of the repercussions of them not writing something down that sometimes they write it even if they haven't done it. And that's doctors and midwives alike, and that's absolutely wrong to the nth degree. But how many how many me. people tell you that? I mean, you, you'll be aware of the current um, huge question marks over uh, similar activities in Colchester Hospital. Definitely, and and you know that that's the worst case scenario. But the fear the fear of being sort of uh, losing your job because of litigation, the fear of organisations of litigation. We need to rethink. We need a radical rethink of how um, services are improved through improving the culture, through nurturing staff, and not living in this constant fear. It's not helping at all. And P Peter Savage, I don't know how um, aware you are of other countries and and what the record on on health insurance is. There, the Department of Health says the NHS.
NHS is one of the safest places in the world to have a baby. And yet this same report, which looked at costs of insurance, also talked about a, a wide, unexplained variation in complication rates between hospitals. That can mean being readmitted shortly after having a baby, big disparities in infection rates between hospitals, and unexplained. Yeah, Sheila, I, I, most clinical negligence lawyers agree with, with the midwife's comment that the, the NHS is full of skilled professionals. I think we're very lucky in that we have the NHS in this company, and I think we're the envy of the world. The, the safety procedures have got more onerous, but the safety procedures have to be adhered to. And the reason that costs are in the increase and premiums are so high is that the safety procedures still aren't right. If there weren't so many accidents and mistake, mistakes being made, then the claims wouldn't be being brought with, with the cost to the NHS and the taxpayer. What about the numbers of midwives? Only this week in the House of Commons, Sheena, we heard the Prime Minister again talking about an increase in, uh, I think he said, a 1,000 more midwives. Um, where do you stand on the figures? Yeah, I think we, we definitely... We've needed more midwives, and year on year it, the situation gets worse. I think that it's OK to say that we've put more midwives into training, but we haven't got enough midwives to actually support the midwives in training to become midwives, if you know what I mean. And I we, do. Still have a lot of midwives unemployed and they can't get jobs. Well, I was going to ask you about that because, again, I know from personal experience that there are uh, well trained, fully qualified midwives, Mm -hmm. young, but you know, beginning their career, but fully qualified and well trained, um, waiting around for posts to be advertised. Working in supermarkets in the meantime. Exactly. And that's because the way the NHS um, functions in terms of its finances, it it isn't working for maternity services. So they need a rethink of of that as well. You know, there needs to be some kind of um, sort of uh, process of looking into how maternity care is funded from, from staffing points of view. Peter, a final thought from you on the costs here. You think the, well, you said at the beginning that the costs are the costs, but I'm not sure I quite understood that. No, what I meant by that, Sheila, was if, if the statistic or the figure is £700, then I'm not going to argue with that. We would all love to see that premium come down, and that premium can only come down if fewer mistakes are being made. If that's as a result of more midwives, more obstetricians, then that's what needs to happen. I think it'd be worth to ask you, Peter, what what your stance is on the fact that it's actually going up, the claims are going up year on year. So we're putting more safety measures in process, in place because of CNST and because of the, the, the litigation um, situation. So we're doing that year on year in maternity services. It's going, it's going harder to kind of carry out your job because your, the safety measures are so intense that, uh, and it's not improving things. So what's the answer? What would you say was the answer? I would agree with what you said earlier, more staff, more highly trained staff, more training for the existing staff and more doctors available. And And Sheen, sorry, go on, Sheen. No, I would just, I would just like to suggest, you know, in some other countries, there's no fault compensation, and I'm, and I, ten, more than ten years ago, England, well, the United Kingdom looked into that with the making amends document, and it was completely sidelined. In some countries, it works well, and I'm not saying that NHS trusts and clinicians shouldn't be responsible and accountable for their actions. Definitely, there should be a transparency that goes right across. But if there was a no blame culture, then staff could work in a different environment and be nurtured and looked after and supported and the money would go to the women and the money would go to the staff and instead of instead of to the lawyers what would you say about that well i think the 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 costs um, that come in this year following Sir Rupert Jackson's proposals in, in the, the Act that was implemented on the 1st of April have reduced the costs, the legal costs payable. And I think the system that we have in this country is very good for compensating injured parties. There are other systems available in other countries, but I think our legal system is the envy of the rest of the world. But that's because, it's, that's because the money is going to the litigation um, organisations rather than to the women and to the midwives and to the doctors. So well, that's, I, I, perhaps, that's perhaps your stance on it because of that. But I would argue that we, we should rethink the way that safety um, safety measures are in place and that staff are looked after and they're able to care then for families. Can I um, ask you just a, can I ask you a, a final question, Sheena, about something else that was in this report? Um, Margaret Hodge um, of the Public Accounts Committee says she was shocked, I'm quoting now, shocked to discover that England has a much higher perinatal mortality rate than the rest of the United Kingdom. So perinatal is in the days and weeks just after birth, isn't it? Uh, Rather than neonatal, which is immediately after birth. Um, And and the figure that one in 133 babies uh, was stillborn or died within several days of birth. Um, 
again, in, in English figures. Is that something that concerns you? Yes, it is, and I think it's, it, it does concern me, and that, that, that is a, another topic that has to be looked into because you wonder why that's happening. It needs to be drilled down to see actually what the reasons are for that um, in terms of safety measures and imposing further safety measures. I do think it's a, a really important subject that needs further attention. We will give it further attention, Sheena. Thank, Thank you. you, and we'll, we'll call you in the process. Thank you very much indeed. Sheena Byram, a midwife based in Lancashire. Many thanks to Peter Savage, a partner at the Clinical Negligence Bank. Specialist law firm Medical Accident Group. It's time for some travel now from Orna. Thanks, Sheila.